go back to Event City and you said in a lot of respects it was the best show and the worst show you've ever done. Everything went wrong that could have gone wrong behind the scenes. Oh, Jesus Christ, it was a nightmare. So, Sandy were, had sponsored me all the way through our promoting for the very first sh show, Fight Shop, that was owned by the Crowns at the time. They got on board massively as, as like the key sponsor of the show. And Paul Hitman, who owns Sandy, the brand in Thailand, that they, they got on board and sponsored us. And they sponsored me and Salford and my guys all the way through. They always looked after Dayton, Cassie, Mark, you know. All my guys always fought in Sandy, no matter where we were. You know, we represented the brand. And along came Event City. We'd ordered shorts, like we did for every show. You know, all the guys got to keep the shorts to fight in bespoke gloves just for the day. And... Um, I was panicking, are they going to be here on time, are they going to be here on time, are they going to be here on time. And I don't know what happened, but they were late leaving Thailand. Two days before the show, we know they've landed in the UK, but nobody knew where they were. Day before the show, they're in customs at the hub at Leicester. The show's gone to rock and ruin at this point. Everybody's expected to turn up, wear the main event shorts, our sponsors. Um, it was all claims direct at the time. Big accident management company. They, uh, they had their name plastered across the back of them. They all had the main event logo on the form and it like an exploding sun, I think them gloves were. But they're in customs. Fight Shop had just sold out to a new guy called Ian Wright. And he was big in the business world, but he tried to pull a few strings and we got nowhere. So out came Daz Morris's best blagging. I ring customs, I managed to get a manager after about 30 phone calls of getting through to somebody. And I had to lie at my ass and tell people that we were going live on TV for children in need and they had royalty attending the show. They opened up the Lancaster hub at half six the next morning just to provide us these boxes of gloves. It was ridiculous. To, to this day, me and Darren Phillips still laugh about it. No, to pulling it off, yeah. getting it done. Because, I mean, that, that that show, I mean, I know we've spoke about Rumble at the Reebok and all that, but all the main event shows were all m myself, Phil Shedden, Das Phillips, by the last two. Um, sorry, Kirsty Hollingworth and Gemma Cuff were involved in some of the shows as well. Um, but behind the scenes, uh, the, 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 it, it, it was mental. Event City was, was ridiculous. So we're expecting Rumble at the Reebok size crowd in a venue twice as big with four times the amount of seats put out. We knew that the right seat was out. We brought in tiered seating, which tiered seating, if anybody's ever done any promoting, tiered seating inside a venue that doesn't own seats is ridiculous. The money involved is ridiculous. You've got to remember when you're doing a big show, that's a big blank exhibition space. There's no lights, there's no sound, there's no seats. There's no runway. Half the time there's no carpet. There's no tablecloths. Every single thing's an expense. And we brought it all in to, to create this, this warm feeling arena type environment. Because for a long time, uh, me and Dan Green used to say, there's nothing in between the Premier Suite here and the MEN. There's nothing in the middle. 2,000 to 20,000. Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing in the middle. We looked at the velodrome, which is a big cycling arena, the Olympic cycling arena, that's near the uh, Man City ground, the Etihad. It just doesn't work. It's the wrong shape. You can't get it dark enough. The lighting's not right. It just doesn't work. They've, do, they've done boxing there in the past, and it didn't work for the boxing. Watch for a cat fire. Yeah, it just, it just didn't work for the boxing. Um, Bowlers has become a bit of a better venue now, but... It's still no better than the Prem. Bolton Arena across the road, they've had boxing, but then they've got this gangway right down the middle, and they've got these precious tennis courts in, and they weren't letting anybody in at the time. And we searched high and low to try and find a venue, but it just didn't exist. And bearing in mind, these end destination venues like um, Winter Gardens at Blackpool, the Backstreet Brawlers tried that. They followed me in here, went to Winter Gardens, and crashed 
and Bumped. burnt badly. You know, Blackpool's an end destination. It's not. It, it was just the wrong place. But let's sort numbers because there is, as you know, I probably deal with most promoters and I've done for many years, and there is a misconception on numbers. Numbers are flamboyant. Yeah. So, and on that, what numbers did you put in the USN and Event City? I can tell you what numbers we put in here to start with. About 1,400 people. With the table and chairs in, the Prem won't hold any more than that. I know Brian says about 3,000 stood and with his limited seat, and he probably does because they're all stood up. You know, you get a hell of a lot more people. And Adam Tate gets about 1,819 in there for his cage shows, and they're nowhere near as busy as your camp. Um, Event City we was rigged for about five and a half thousand. We didn't sell out, but we were rammed. I mean, you were there, we were packed. And we uh, we had a click of that just over four thousand hundred people. Um, Which is amazing figures, by the way. Yeah. Tie boxing. Must you've got to remember, with, with Event City, we had things that that no other tie box show had ever had. We had the big screen, which is in the Orient, where you get your food in the Trafford Centre. We were on that running an advert on there. We were on Capital Radio. We, we'd done advertising that had never been done before. So we had Joan and John, with little Billy, going shopping on the Saturday, having the McDonald's or the pizza up. And all of a sudden, there's Andy Thrasher throwing somebody across a ring. And, you know, the, 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 this it was a tamed down fight trailer. I don't think it actually showed any contact, just emulated it because it was in the Orient, but we, we had we had a marketing platform that was not available and never had been before. Um, so, so you opened it up to the masses, Darren? Yeah, we did. But what percentage, rough ballpark figure, would you say was non tie people at them at them events? 20-25%. But it, it was 20-25% that had what, never what, been what, what, done what, before. What we tend to find was, especially when we did the corporate stuff, uh, somebody would say, oh, I'm going to bring the wife on, I'm not sure she's going to like it. End of the show, the wife is the one that's more enthralled. When's the next one? And the next time, she's brought a sister and his husband and their kids. And because it became the glamour it, 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 and, know, the, and the night out also. A lot of people got dressed up for it. A lot, you know, a lot of people got dolled up. I mean, don't get me wrong, but people get dressed up to go to working man's clubs. But we tried to make it more than just about the fights. My ethos on our shows was completely different to Yokel. Brian brings the best fighters from every corner of the world and puts them together, which is, is superb. We try to do the best domestic fighters and the divisions were much stronger back then. So you could have some absolute whack-offs without flying anybody in from anywhere else, apart from maybe your headliner. Liam Harrison beat Andre Kalubin. Um, at event sitter, he kicked his leg off. Liam does what Liam does best, he smashed his leg off. Bear in mind, Andre Kalubin knocked Michael Dix out here on Master Scan's show in about 15 seconds of the first round. You know, it, it was um, it, it, it was massive for Liam that, you know, he, it was brilliant, brilliant to watch. But we didn't have to bring in a raft of foreign talent because we had loads of homegrown, strong quality talent in the UK. I think. I think we were talking about that earlier. At that time and that era, you could have run four fighter tournaments and eight fighter tournaments in some cases in the weight divisions. Oh yeah. Now we've we've had this conversation now about a quote of yours that Muay Thai is in decline, mm -hmm. and you still think that's the case? It's always has been the most trained sport, but the fighters aren't there anymore. I I, I remember. City, Doncaster Dome show, uh, Dan Green did Doncaster Dome, uh, when the MSA thing kind of fell apart, Dan went by himself um, and he did Doncaster Dome and then we went back to the hotel and at the time it was it was Rumble at the Reebok and it was Legends in London and they were the two biggest shows in the country and they rivaled one another and me and Dan used to argue what, like cat and dog about you know who's going to get what fighter and who's paying who what and who's managing who and and we sat up all night. Darren Phillips kind of pushed his pair of us into a room, ploughed me with coffee and biscuits and gave Dan Green, I don't know what it was. Bottle of bourbon or something. Yeah, something like that. And we sat up all night, all night. We didn't go to bed at all. And all we did was try to discuss where the next super fight's coming from. 
at the time the super fights were Watson Wakelin, Liam Wharton. Uh, they, they, they were your super fights. These are not super fights anymore, they don't exist. Um, Liam Charlie, is it worth doing? Oh, not at all. Liam's come down on better weight and now and probably never happened. Charlie's fantastic, but will a 24 year old Charlie Peters beat a 24 year old Liam Harrison? It, it, it would never have happened. You know, I'm, I'm taking nothing away from Liam, Di you know, taking nothing away from Charlie. I'm just saying, if you've got two fighters that both in the prime, I'm not saying Liam's not in his prime, but you know, he, 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 he's not a 25 year old guy anymore. Hmm. Would that have happened at the time? Well, pro probably not. The, the super fights in this country, they, they're not there anymore. We were, we were running out of super fights back then. When the Backstreet Brawlers did this venue, they brought in um, Jabba to fight Dave Paquette. Um, you know, revenge and repeat and all the rest of it, off the back of the Contender series. The, you, people were having to sort of dig deep and look far and wide. We've, we wanted to bring in Yacht Sinclair to fight Stephen Wakely. That was always the fight we wanted. But at the time, we couldn't get Stephen. And Yod Sinclair was affordable. And then when we started working with the Wakelands, who I had a really good, strong relationship with, Stephen had turned into a man mountain, was about 90, 100 kilos, and Yod Sinclair was about 80 grand, if not more. So, he, you know, it was never going to yeah, happen. Uh, Dan Green tried doing it. Uh, it, it just it, it, it was just never going to happen. And that was with the back in the WMC, you know, uh, Stefan Fox and people like that trying to help along the way. We just couldn't get it over the line. What would get, what fight, which, is there any domestic fights today that would get Daz Morris out of his house and come and pay in a venue or jib in a venue to watch? There's lots of young local talent. There's lots and lots of good kids in this country. When I say it's in decline, I'm not talking about people. The, the fight is getting more technical. The guys are getting better. Look at Stuart Stable. My God. You know, he, he, he's superb. You got Adam Haslam. Um, you know, even Dakota, she's. I, I helped him flipping Dakota into MMA. We had a conversation. She comes and trains at the gym where I, I teach striking at. Uh, I don't train Dakota, she does her own thing. But, you know, she, she's. I know she's fighting on Muay Thai Grand Prix, but, you know, in, in Bulgaria. But, you know, she, the, 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 there's a very, very strong, structured path with Dakota. And I think, you know, you'll see her in the UFC before long. Um, is there any domestic, is there any Thai fights in this country that are get me out of bed? Probably not. No. And, I know we had that conversation and, when you first said it, I disagreed, and the more and, you and think you know about what? it... You know, with, with, with all the respects in the world, there's just nothing out there that, that really excites me. It does. 